Hey guys, how's it going? So today's really awesome because I got off work early today. It's Sunday, so I leave the office a little bit earlier. So I have a few hours of extra time, which I am so excited about. You have no idea. It's been so busy these days. Anyway, so I'm gonna use it to work on my painting. I am so excited, it's coming along really great. So today I wanted to take you through a little bit more of my process, how I do the strokes I do, um, a few of the different brushes I use, and yes, the brush does matter. I used to think that whatever brush you used didn't matter. It matters, big time. So I'm gonna show you a few of the brushes I use just in case you are interested in creating something similar or with a similar type of stroke. Um, I'll be showing you the colors I'm using again. Um, I might incorporate a few new colors. I'm not sure. We'll see how it goes. But stay tuned. It's coming along great and it's going to be finished soon. I cannot wait for the big reveal. All right guys, so I wanted to show you um, the colors I used and what I used them for. So these colors right here, these four colors, are what I used for my sky, okay? So my sky, which is blue, a little bit of white in it, and then we've got just a little bit more color right over there. So I used, for that little tiny bit of color at the bottom of the sunset or sunrise, whatever, um, I used really just the tiniest little amount of the red, and this is crimson red, which is a really common um, red in the acrylics. Um, all of my paints are acrylic. I personally like acrylic, so that's what I paint. Um, I used ultramarine blue, also from the same brand, basic brand. I've been using this brand for, for years, guys. They're great. Um, this was, I originally had a basic brand in the white, but I ran out, so I got this like in a pinch. Uh, Ceramicote, Delta Creative, I guess, is the brand, and this is just white, titanium white. Um, and then I used yellow. I happened to use the cadmium yellow, which is also another very common one. So that was just for the sky. Now, for my hills and my, you know, my mountains and my bushes and my trees and stuff, these are the colors I used for that, and these are the only colors I used. You don't need a lot of colors because you make the colors, guys. So for the green, which we obviously needed, I used, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that, but I, it's green. <laughs> um, I used the burnt brown, or burnt umber, sorry. Um, this is a good one. This is a really good brown to use. Mars black, a go-to for every artist, period. Um, the white again, and the same yellow I talked about before. So those are the colors I used. Um, you can get these same colors with the same brand, the basic brand, at any of your local craft stores, whether it be Michael's, Joanne, um, or a painting store, anything like that, you can get these there. Okay, guys, so I'm starting to do the middle section here, which is kind of going to be, you know, like the big old finale, pretty much. And so, like I did with all the other sections, I'm just starting with my minimal detail, like my first base of detail. You know, like these little dots and little swirls, you know, they aren't symbolic of anything yet. It's just kind of building the definition and building the image. Um, so that's how I started and I kind of mix it up. So as you see, I did like a little bit of a darker like ash green, a little bit more fluorescent green. I've got some brown going in there. And basically what I'm going to aim to do, which I kind of did like, you know, with this going that way, that one going that way, is these hills are going into each other right now. And you might not be able to see that just yet, but as it comes together, you will be able to see that. And it's going to be really phenomenal when it's all said and done but so i'm going to have them going into each other like that and now i'm going to go over it with some trees and a little bit more detail and definition and i'll show you what it looks like when we're done i'm going to start putting these trees and really it's really simple all i do is that that's it done tree i love it so easy you can definitely do this yourself. If you think that you can't do this painting, you definitely can. It's a very easy painting. It's very straightforward. It's definitely very large, you know, so I could see how it could be a little bit intimidating, but you do not have to do the same painting the exact size that this one is. If you wanted to do the same painting, 
you could do it on a much smaller canvas and still get the same painting. You know what I mean? So you can do it. Don't let yourself think that you can't do it because you can. All right, guys. So I have this really wicked color that I made right here and it's really perfect for what I'm doing right now. So I'm gonna go and put some more trees in. And as you can see, I started doing a few where it's a little bit lighter. So that's all definition and highlights. I mean, even if you go into, you know, your photos on your phone or something, and you wanted to like edit your photo and stuff, like two of the things that you'll see is highlights and shadows as a couple of the tools that you can edit your photos with. And it's very, very similar to that, really. It's, you know, I'm manually putting in the highlights and the shadows, but it makes a huge difference. You know, it looked one way when it was all kind of darker trees, and then you throw a couple ones in there that are lighter, that are catching the light, you know, from the sun or from whatever source, and it makes it pop. You know, it really, really does. So keep that in mind if you're doing any of your own paintings. All right, guys, so now I'm taking a break from the trees for a minute. Um, I'm doing a couple little rocks, actually, right now. Um, so I'm using, you know, my white and my black, my Mars black, to kind of make um, a grayish color. I did add just a touch of brown for the second set of rocks. Because, um, you know, rocks are all different colors. They're generally the same color, but they're all different colors. So these little gray and browner marks, those are all the rocks I've made so far. So since we talked about how I'm having my hills kind of go into each other like that, in that canyon area, there's going to be lots of, you know, loose rocks that have kind of slid down and kind of hung out there. So I want to make sure I'm defining those loose rocks, and that's what I'm doing now. So I'm just adding a couple, like, little, like, kind of dots almost. And then when the painting's all finished and there's everything else surrounding it, it's going to really imitate, you know, rock formation in the canyon there. So I'm really excited about it. But that's a cool technique you can use. You know, it's important to look at photos, guys. It's important to go go places and actually look at things and see, you know, how does this naturally fall? How does this naturally lay, you know? What's going to look the most real? Um, so that's one of the things that taught me about these rocks, you know? I've looked at so many different photos and been to so many different places that it's definitely a trend in our hills. So I want to make sure I get those in this painting. Okay guys, so another quick lesson on shadowing and highlighting, okay? So remember, my light source is over there and it's not going to be totally consistent through my entire painting because, you know, I changed my idea of what I wanted to do a few times, but the light source is over there, okay? You know, and up in the sky, okay? So since I'm having both of these go inward, these hills right here, this right here, the ridge, this dark line, that's the ridge, okay? So these trees, this set of vegetation right here, needs to be darker than the vegetation and trees that we're doing right here. The reason being because this is lifted up. So the light is hitting this. So we want this to be lighter, this to be a little bit darker, and it's really gonna give your painting a pop and show that you know what you're doing when it comes to definition and shading. Okay guys, so I'm pretty much almost done with this top section of uh, the front facing hill here. Um, so it's coming along really well, I'm really happy about it. But so you guys can totally see right here what I mean um, by how I was going to make this side darker, this side lighter, and that was because of the lighting, the natural lighting that, you know, I'm portraying in my painting. Um, so it looks really good, and it really does add so much definition. guys so uh it is my day off and i'm getting right into my painting this morning i'm really excited about it it is 9 a.m on the dot and i am at work okay so it's really just a blast um so one thing i wanted to show you was just like my painting setup the way i set everything up before i start painting and believe it or not it kind of matters to me just because i like to be organized and it helps me have a really good game plan so this is what it looks like all right, guys, so one of the most important things with my painting is lighting. You know, especially since I'm filming everything, that's my tripod right there uh, where I do the filming. Um, you know, I need lighting. So I've got 
my drapes open so I've got a little bit of that kind of light and then I've got this lamp going right now because um, it just makes a huge difference and I really need the lighting so I can give you guys a really good painting tutorial. Um, then over here I've got just the colors I'm going to be using for the next at least couple hours anyway. I'm um, doing more of the vegetation stuff. Uh, I've got to have my coffee, of course, <laughs> big boy one. Um, this is gonna be my mixing tray and my painting tray for today where I'm doing my blending and picking my colors from. Um, I've got pretty much all the brushes I think I'm gonna be using today. I might use one other type of brush, but this is pretty much gonna be it. And in case you were wondering, um, it is, I'm using a six. This is the one I use kind of for more of my bushes. Um, this one is more of a blending blush for me, the blending brush for me. I'll probably use this one the least. This is a three quarter inch. Um, let's see here. This one is a quarter inch. This is the one I use for my trees. I call this the tree brush. It's perfect for making my little trees. This is my very tiny little detail brush. This one is, okay, a 20 slash zero. To be honest, guys, I don't know what that means. I don't know what a bad video maker I am. But now you know what it is. Um, and I'm using a number two brush. This is like one step up from the little tiny detail brush. Um, this I just use to kind of do my base details. Um, like I've showed you guys before where I do like my little squiggles and my little bushes and things like that just as a base. And then you are gonna want some clean water. <laughs> paintbrush down for a minute and shower and get back to real life. Um, so I'm just heading to an appointment. I had to pick up my coffee before I went. I'm like, I'm like angry at myself with coffee lately. I'm like, I need to start saving my money. I need, I mean like I'm saving money, but I need to stop spending <laughs> so much money at Starbucks. Oh my gosh. It's not that easy. It's not that easy. I'm trying, I'm thinking of ways I can do things. I think I might get like a Keurig or something, I don't know. But I hope everyone's doing well. I know I say that like every single time I'm on camera, but I truly do. I hope everyone is doing really, really well um, or as well as you can be. Um, the weather's really funky today, so I'm like kind of bummed about it. Um, hopefully it gets better because I would really love to go down to the beach and get some really nice shots today. Um, we will find out. Only time will tell. Um, so, I really hope that you guys have been enjoying the painting tutorial type stuff I've been doing. A lot of people reached out to me after episode 7 and, you know, really commented on how much they liked that and wanted me to do more of it. So, that's why I've been doing more of it. So, I hope you guys are all enjoying. Um, if you guys do want to see anything else, specifically about painting that I maybe didn't touch on that you're really interested in, go ahead and comment below and let me know and I'll make sure to put it in my next vlog. All right guys, so I just got back from my appointment, totally got into my painting clothes right away. We're gonna dive right back on in. So pay attention. All right, guys, so let me catch you up real quick. So I did do the base shading for this other ridge. I didn't even plan on having this other ridge, um, but I'm going to because I just kind of felt like doing it. So that's coming along really well. As you can see, I did a lighter shade on the other side because remember, our light comes from over there. And then I'm doing a darker over here. 
So I did most of the vegetation, if not all, on the lighter side that's getting the sun. So I'm just starting to branch down into the darker shaded side. It's coming along great, guys. So remember, as you can see, so the trees are going up on this side and then they're going down on this side. And that's because, remember, this piece in the middle here, that's the highest point of this mountain, really, uh, of this hill anyway. Remember, that's at the highest. This is all coming closer to us. So keep your perspective in mind, guys. And remember, keep looking at pictures. Keep going outside and looking at the way the sun hits things. It helps a lot because sometimes you can get started and get kind of flabbergasted with things going in all different directions and kind of forgetting where your place is, you know, but it's good to look at pictures, like I said, and just keep going because it's all going to be okay no matter how it comes out. Believe me, it always gets worse before it gets better, but I'm going to give you guys a nice little time lapse for when I finish this ridge right here, and then we'll go from there, guys. fight the feeling and I'm not denying it, no. I'm here to lose our control. Got emotions, yeah, yeah. emotions, they all want to go dance. Sweat yeah, in yeah. an ocean and I'm not denying it, no. Yeah, yeah. I'm here to lose our control. Yeah, yeah. is finished it is basically finished the only thing that i'm gonna do is i'm gonna add some of this right here and this is matte gel um, this is made by liquitex professional you can get this at the craft store as well and this you can put right on your painting as soon as it's finished and it's dried and this will you know seal it and give it a nice finish that's translucent it does look white and when you're putting it on, it's going to look like white paint, but trust me, it will dry translucent. All right, guys, so just really quickly to show you the matte gel and what that's like if you plan on doing that, which I definitely recommend if you can afford the extra, you know, 10 bucks on this. Definitely worth it. Um, you're just going to go ahead and get a big brush, especially if you've got a huge painting like this. Just get a big brush. It's much easier. Um, and you're going to put a generous amount on the brush. Um, you could also just dip it right into here, but mm, I'm classy, so no. And <laughs> um, you can just, as you can see, like the way it starts, it looks almost like partially white paint, but you're just going to keep blending that in until it's just gone. Um, and I'll show you in just a minute what that looks like after it's all blended in, because it will be all blended in. And there you go. So you can't even see it, you know what I mean? So it looks the same visually, but it definitely adds a little bit more, I don't know if I use the word depth, but mass to your painting. It helps retain your brush strokes and all the shapes and little markings you made. Um, acrylic paintings over time, they can get a little worn out, especially, you know, if there's dust or if, you know, people are touching them a lot. So this is definitely a good idea. Okay guys, so I finished putting my matte gel um, all over the painting to seal it and keep it really nice. Um, it's looking absolutely great. Um, so now, if you guys remember what I said in my last vlog about the tape, it is time to take it off. And that, my friends, is the most satisfying part of this entire process. Look at that line. Wow, look at that. Wow, would you look at that, guys? That is amazing. Wow. This feels so good. It really feels incredible to have completed this. I started this over a week ago, and it's just really great. It's a really great feeling. I feel really accomplished right now, um, and I'm just... I'm so grateful. This is amazing. I hope that this inspired you guys to open up to your creative side and do something creative, even if it is just on a whim, because this was on a whim. This painting was on a whim, and it came out way better than I thought it would, and 
I'm just so happy with the results. So remember guys, if you have a dream, if you have something you wanna do, just go do it because it's worth it, no matter what. How's it going guys? Good morning. So I am just heading out to get a coffee really, really quick. And, oh my goodness, I am so tired. Anyways, so I'm heading to Starbucks now to get my coffee. And then I'm gonna go home. <clears throat> um, I may do a little bit of vlog editing before I get right back into the painting this morning, um, but I will be doing both today. Um, so we'll be doing some more painting tutorial stuff. Um, I'll be going over the vlog a little bit. Hopefully we can get that released in the next couple of days. Um, in between all the work I have going on, I swear it's like during the week, or like on the weekend rather, it's like I'm still working, I'm just working for myself, because I'm just non-stop, and then during the week I work for somebody else, it's like work, 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 still grateful to be off, anyways, we trying to go to the beach later, I really, really, really want to go um, <clears throat> looking for sharks today, Yes, you heard that right. Looking for sharks. Um, August is pretty much the best month to go look for the leopard sharks here in Southern California. Um, they do a lot of their mating and all that good stuff that's science related, you know, around this time. Uh, so this is the best time to see them. So I'm going to try to go down to Laguna Beach later um, with some goggles and my gear and my camera and try to get some really cool shots of the leopard sharks for you guys. got out of the water it's incredible to me nothing makes me feel more alive than going for a swim in the ocean there was a lot to see all really beautiful so I'm just going for a quick little walk around looking to see if there's anything more beautiful to look at Alright guys, so I'm just taking a little tour through all the little tide pools. Wow, so it's really low tide today right now, so I'm seeing so much more than I usually see and it is so incredibly cool. This is so exciting. I'm just like obsessed with marine life. Wow guys, <clears throat> the water clarity today is just so beautiful. I mean just look at all the seaweed and you know just the ocean life moving around. It's just so incredible. We've heard it all. 